A girl is worth nothing. That was what I was told for 17 years of my life. It was hard for me to accept and even harder for me to ignore. Over the years, I've learned that technology is a great equalizer. Technology changed my life in many ways. It has brought me today here as the Chief Technology Officer of the World Bank Group. I'm honored today to share with you my journey of how I changed my fate and not accepting it the way I was born in. So technology career for me happened fortuitously. It was the door that was available for me at that time, and that was the only door I could take. And thank goodness I took it. And it has become one of the critical moments in my life that changes everything afterwards. But unfortunately, not many women and girls have that opportunity or understand the meaning of technology as an equalizer for them. That is sad for me, but I hope through my story, we will have the opportunity to figure out how we can help everyone, men and women, partake in this journey together. Let me take you to a humble beginning. In Singapore, I was born out of wedlock to a teenage 18-year-old girl. She was not ready to have a daughter at that time. And her famous or popular saying was, giving birth to you doesn't mean I have to raise you. I was so hurt and I was carrying that curse with me until I was a teenager. And then I realized friends are God's way of apologizing for bad family. So I suffered a lot through my whole childhood, going through a lot of abuses, but I came to my realization that the abuse may be with me, but they don't own me. So I, at 18, I was accepted to the National University of Singapore after I finished my A-level exam in arts and humanities. But that's when I really suffered this whole identity crisis and I spiraled down into depression mode. And finally, I took that one way ticket to California and with just 25 cents to my name. Then I realized, oh, take, I don't have the right skills. I am a poor, starving artist. In a foreign land, what do I do? I wrote to several universities, but unfortunately, the only ones who will give me a scholarship is in computer engineering mathematics. Thank God I had a good foundation in science and math in Singapore. So I pivot. I took the growth mindset and embraced this change. And I understand what it is, how hard it is, but that did not deter me. I wanted to make it work. And from that point onwards, I became good in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. My career started as a telecommunication engineer designing data center for Exxon. While it was interesting, it was not what I really wanted. Shortly after that, I joined Deloitte. And that's when I discover the development for applications and systems for the clients. Deloitte opened my mind to all the possibilities of applying my technology skills to industry verticals, such as healthcare, financial services, and government. I also discover a passion for entrepreneurship. So I decided to start my own business in consulting, which I ran for 15 years. I enjoy running my business, but a friend of mine challenged me. He said, well, you know, you've done well, but what if you get out of that comfort zone and join a big corporation and see what it feels like for a woman in technology? 
And I said, well, let me give it a try. I joined Microsoft. At first, I thought I could figure it out, but I did not realize how hard it was for me having to pivot from a startup mindset to a big corporation. I didn't understand why is it so hard for women in technology to, to thrive in a big organization that encourage more women to step up in technology. Then I realized I needed to embrace that growth mindset again and step out of my comfort zone. I had my first moment of gender bias when I was on the job and I presented a proposal to put my learnings of the last three years in a large pharmaceutical and share my architectural design to the audience. This is an annual technical meeting. And the reaction from my male colleague was, is this going to be technical enough? I was offended. But then I regained my composure and I said, you wouldn't know until you gave me a chance. Without a doubt, my friends came to my rescue to help me prepare for this event. Now, what was a dreaded experience for me was that I was given the last slot on the last day of the conference. And that was unnerving for me. But my friends, men and women, come to my rescue. They rallied their friends to come to that event and supported me. The presentation was outstanding, and I got great feedback. From that point onwards, and every year after that, I had a chance to present at that technical meeting. It's what we call the Geek Fest. <laughs> I love every moment of it. But in that journey, what I've learned is that you may have those moments of gender bias, but we need to come together, men and women, to support the woman and give them the confidence to step up to the occasion. And I was fortunate enough to have that opportunity. In those years, I learned that I need to be politically savvy. I need to build the confidence to navigate in that ecosystem. I also learned how to navigate in the big maze of an organization over 100,000 employees around the world. And I value that experience for seven years. Not one, not two, seven. During that journey, I also found out that there's a humble beginning that I needed to go back in Asia to close a chapter I began. So I went back to Asia to cover the financial services and I learn what it is like to support the regional banks as they transform in the digital economy, to really pick up new skills. The fintech startups are going after the same market and eroding the market share of the banks. They're going after new technologies such as blockchain, internet of things, and also the areas around artificial intelligence to serve the customers cheaper, faster, and with more capabilities than the banks could. Those are the aha moments that gave the banks a wake-up call and say they need to also transform. During that time in Asia, I also see firsthand how technology changes the lives of the women's social enterprises. It gave them a chance, an equalizer, for them to step up in the digital economy and it gives them the hope that they can change the fate that they were born in, just like me. In this journey, I became more resolved to want to convert that technology skills into doing social good. I did a lot of work in public speaking, but I also done a lot of work in Reach Out to various programs in Asia. But I also come to realize in order to have a greater social impact, I needed to step outside of my comfort zone again, to trust in the skills that I've developed over the years, to also count on my support network, and to also believe in the technology equalizing force to bring it to the next level. 
So on March 1st, 2018, I decided that this is time for me to turn the chapter to now join the largest development institution in the world, the World Bank Group. This has been an honor and an opportunity for me to embrace the learnings of all these years. From all the support that I have been given, I couldn't have done all that without the help of folks who believe in me, men and women who come together to help me through those dark moments and the hardest points in my life. And it's a moment for me to give back using technology to solve development challenges around the world, to reduce world poverty and increase shared prosperity. My career in technology has gotten me to this far, but I can only imagine how many women and men around the world may not have the opportunity to rise to the occasion and understand the full power of technology as the equalizer. With all that that I've learned, what I wanted to do is to use this platform to share with the community. I started in the telecommunication as a network engineer for Exxon, connecting systems and applications that translate into building community of bringing people together, of helping each other learn and grow together. In the new technology space, where our lives is affected in so many ways by the events of artificial intelligence. And for students, there are so many new areas where technology can create new jobs for you. This is when I started realizing that there is an opportunity for all of us to come together and a call to action. For parents, you can learn about the new technology and the implication of how this technology can create new jobs for your children. Let us cast aside our prevalent bias that STEM education is only for boys. Girls can code, and we want to give girls a chance and encourage them to go take the STEM education track so that they can have equal chance in life to leverage the power of this equalizing force. For teachers, it's never too early to learn about artificial intelligence. You have the chance to influence the young minds of all ages to partake in this journey where you can take the data and bring it to life with storytelling of the visualization effect of using technology and converting that raw data into insights. For tech companies, this is the opportunity to continue that partnership where you can create more jobs and also internship so that the students can learn and apply these skills into good use. We need more role models, more advocates, more mentors and sponsors for students, men and women, in order for them to have the stepping stone to rise up to the occasion. And for the girls around the world, continue to dream big. Because, as you know, a girl with a big dream will become the woman with the vision, the skills, and the will to change the world. Thank you.